this is Dustin with Guest House Radio. And this is Carl from Magnificent Birds of Prey. We're watching the UJS Network. Tonight on Under the Scoop. They're not making it anywhere near the amount of money that they're putting out or that they're risking. A lot of these guys that come and fight, they have, you know, manual labor jobs or, you know, they're working, you know, part-time jobs, two or three. They don't have any health insurance. Welcome to another edition of Under the Scope, and tonight we continue our series on mixed martial arts fighting. In round two, we talk about the risk, and as you'll find out, the risk might not be as bad as you think, but in the end, it's still risk. Let's go to ringside. At first, like, I know that my parents weren't excited about me doing this because uh, they hear fighting and, I mean, they just didn't want me to get hurt. Who can blame Aaron's parents because we see the results of fighting and sometimes it's not pretty. Or that they're risking. A lot of these guys that come and fight, they have, you know, manual labor jobs or, you know, they're working, you know, part-time jobs, two or three. They don't have any health insurance and they're really risking everything for the love of the sport. And it becomes a, a gamble. You know, if they get hurt, what do they do? You know, so it's not only the money that you put out to train and the blood tests. You have to pay for your own blood tests and your own pre-doctor visit and all that stuff. But it's also the potential of the money that you may put out if you do get injured. You know, and that's a real, that's reality. Even guys that fight in the UFC, they have to deal with that. Think about it. The guy who makes it to a CFFC fight or a UFC fight takes countless hours in preparation and in one moment your life can change forever but before you write this off as a violent sport like boxing it's not safeguards are in place now that weren't when i first started you know like if you want to compete there's always risk there's always danger um but they've done a lot in recent years the past 10 or 15 years to try to reduce that risk and the safeguards begin with the fighters being students of multiple mixed martial arts, like jiu-jitsu. Uh, and the beauty is we're in 100% control the whole time. Whenever we get a lock-in or something, like, we've been doing this all long enough, so, like, we, and we've had this, these moves done to us enough times that we know how, how much they can hurt someone. And we know how to do them in such a way that we get the message across that, okay, I, I've submitted you, but we're, I'm not going to break your arm in half. Another safeguard is the referees. And they've got to, you've got to actually have a serious amount of knowledge, you know, understand positions, know when somebody's in trouble, know when they're, you know, actively defending themselves. Um, you know, a lot of referees get, get blasted. They stop a fight too early or something like that, but they're, they're looking out for the person who's getting hit. You know, all they have to see is one, you know, their eyes open up wide and their hands drop. That's it. I mean, they're out. There's no, it's not like boxing. If you look at boxing, you look at all the guys who get Parkinson's and, you know, have brain damage from multiple concussions or guys who have died in the ring. You don't see that in MMA. MMA, if you're not intelligently defending yourself, if you get hit once and you're out, you're out. I mean, that's it. The fight's over. Nobody, they're not going to let you take additional damage. Ed also says other safety features just start from the beginning. No, knowing, you know, that if you're getting taken down, not to post your hand to get your wrist broken and things like that, it just comes with, you know, you're going to get taken down. You're going to hit the mat. It's not really going to hurt that much. It's just the, the falling feeling most people have is the reaction as opposed to their hand. And that can be, you know, dangerous. Or they try to turn while they're falling and they end up hitting their head and, you know, getting themselves knocked out or anything. It's just, you know, the fall's coming. Just fall. <laughs> it's not, these mats are pretty thick, you know. It's, it's not going to hurt that bad. And it, even in the cages, you know, they're padded. It's not going to hurt that bad. You just take the fall and look to move and keep going. You know, as far as all the other injuries, everybody, you know, long enough in any sport, you're going to get injured. We aren't trying to make it sound like the risk isn't there. It is. But Kevin sums up what each fighter needs to do from the very beginning. If you're doing things the right way, you're going to minimize the, the potential to get injured. You know? That concludes this edition of Under the Scope. And we do have one more round for you. But we're going to take a little break. And next month, we're going to bring you a totally different topic. Right now, uh, it's a city on the rise, and I think that we'll benefit as a scene from that. Um, you know, with all the development, you know, 
around the city that's going on right now. I mean, every, it seems like every neighborhood is getting gentrified. And, you know, we're no different here. And I feel like we started the gentrification down here below Washington Avenue. There was nothing going on down here except for Pats and Geno's. From everyone from the UTS Network and the Under the Scope staff, I'm Chuck. Thanks for watching.